Hello, Dr. Vicki Peterson here. I want to talk to you today about a study that came out in BMC Gastroenterology. Uh, Dr. Alessio Fasano was one of uh, several researchers who participated in this study. And it's quite fascinating. It has to do with um, refractory celiac disease and uh, non-responsive celiac disease. And basically, um, if somebody's non-responsive, it means that uh, they continue to have symptoms despite a gluten-free diet and or they continue to have a villus atrophy. So their small intestine is not healing despite a gluten-free diet. Um, with refractory uh, celiac disease, uh, the symptoms are, are more serious. The person is definitely not getting well and um, the procedure that's used is uh, immunotherapy drugs. So these drugs um, basically prevent the immune system from attacking the small intestine, but they also prevent the immune system from doing all the wonderful things it should do, like attacking cancer cells and bacteria. And so when you're on immunosuppressive drugs, it's, it's very serious. It's a, it's a big compromise to your health. Uh, your incidence of cancer and other infections goes up. So it's not something you want to do if you do not have to. So what this group of researchers did, uh, and I'm so thrilled they did because up until this point for me, it's just been kind of um, a supposition that uh, this was true, which is what they found. Uh, I'll go over in a second. Um, because in my 20 years uh, and my fellow doctors here at Health Now, uh, working with patients with celiac disease and gluten sensitivity, um, we haven't seen much, if any, refractory celiac disease. We might have a case right now. I'm not totally convinced yet. Um, but for the most part, we just haven't run into it. So um, I was thinking that it's because we work extensively with their diet. We work with the secondary effects of gluten. We don't just say, stay off gluten, goodbye, good luck, and, and leave it at that. So it's just been my suspicion that there's more that could be done with these cases, and that's exactly what these researchers found. So uh, they began with uh, 17 patients, uh, 15 of whom were women, and they put them on a gluten contamination elimination diet. So um, what this was was a, a diet designed to eliminate, um, I won't say hidden uh, aspects of gluten because these patients all were involved in this study because they did continue to have symptoms, but analyzing their diet, they were very much following a gluten-free diet. So they were perfectly um, accurate in following uh, no gluten in their diet. However, what this gluten contamination elimination diet does is it eliminates um, potential cross-contamination issues. So what they were allowed to eat, the only grain they were allowed to eat was rice, both white rice and brown rice, uh, fresh fruits and vegetables, uh, fresh meat, eggs, chicken, fish, nothing processed, no bacon, no ham, nothing, just nothing overly processed with ingredients in it. So in other words, not slices of turkey um, that you buy at the deli counter that had a list of ingredients, but if you you know, you bought a, a turkey and you cooked the turkey and the ingredients were turkey, then you're allowed to eat it. And, and by the way, turkey is not a great example because they tend to put a lot of chemicals in turkeys even though, even when you cook them. So let me retract that and more say a chicken breast or a piece of salmon, something like that. So um, you wouldn't be eating salmon jerky, you would just be eating fresh salmon that you cooked yourself. So I think you get the idea. Um, they were also allowed herbs, salt, honey, and let me check my list to see if I'm leaving anything out. Nope, that's it. Okay, so that was the diet. And what they found statistically, so the, the patients were on this diet, oh, and no dairy products for the first month, which I thought was very clever of them. So they eliminated dairy for the first month and then, and then saw whether the reintroduction was a problem after the first month. But then they were on the entire diet um, for three to six months, so three months minimum. And what they found was that six of those people who were thought to have uh, refractive celiac disease, that serious condition where you have to be put on immunosuppressive drugs, after being on this diet, five of them were absolutely fine. Five out of six of them were absolutely fine. And the statistic was that 82% uh, responded to this diet very favorably, so their symptoms eradicated on this diet. So what we learned by this is that true refractory celiac disease is probably much more rare than we, we think, which 
has been my supposition, as I mentioned, and that really what if we clean up the diet and, and really get to the source of any uh, contamination that's coming in. And by the way, the reason they only had white rice and brown rice on this diet was that they had done an analysis of um, single um, single ingredient grain products of gluten-free grains and they found that 32 percent of them had more than 20 parts per million of gluten. So there was contamination. So they said whether it was in the milling process or the storage process, whatever it was, they were finding contamination and they felt rice was not in this category um, according to their research and so that was allowed. Um, the also, the other good news was that the vast majority of people after this three to six months of a, of a quite restricted diet were able to go back to their normal, if you will, gluten-free diet at the end of it and, and did quite well. So the vast majority of patients could do that. Um, I think that probably what happened was their immune system got a break because of course they took away the contamination of gluten. It came up to the next level and uh, it was basically responding to a little bit of cross-contamination much better, which is what, what should happen. Um, that a, a li you, know, you should be able to tolerate, they said about 500 milligrams of, of um, food that had more than 20 parts per million, but of course not everybody's in that category. So I think what we can learn from this is that that, um, number one, if you're, if you're off gluten completely but you're still having symptoms, I've talked about the secondary effects in the past and I think I can add to the secondary effects of gluten is, is true cross-contamination and um, being more vigilant in that area. Certainly highly processed foods, even if you weren't gluten intolerant, they're just not that good for you. They have a lot of chemicals in them. Um, the very word processed shows you that they're not, not a very natural source of, of the food. So um, cleaning up the diet in that way is, is really a healthy way to go anyway, even for the average person who, who had no intolerance to gluten. So I think we're talking about a, a healthy diet regardless. And, um, and the fact that those, if you know anybody who actually has refractive celiac disease and is on immunosuppressive drugs, this is a great study to show them and their doctors and uh, could maybe make a huge difference in them healing and getting off this dangerous medication. Uh, so I hope you found that informative and uh, please send me your questions. I do love to hear from you. And until next time, I wish you very good health.